One of the things that excites me the most about global warming is the opportunity for us to create uh, jobs and prosperity in our own country if we follow a sensible path. Uh, and Mr. Uh, Ms. Grunick mentioned uh, that in China, I think you're the one that mentioned it, uh, you were there, and they're very excited about energy efficiency. Where do you think we are with regard to technology that we could export to China or other countries of the world, creating jobs here in this country vis-a-vis uh, -vis where they would be uh, to create uh, uh, industries that would take those jobs away from us? Um, Mr. Sokolaris, could you take a stab at that? On the intellect, we have the intellectual capital in order to, to help them substantially. As a matter of fact, our company, we get uh, at least uh, once a month an invitation to uh, either do a partnership with some Chinese company. They are looking for knowledge. I think we can, uh, especially um, with the product where we finance the projects, because that's one of the, the, the products that we have where we finance the particular energy savings project, and then we guarantee that the savings will be there. And uh, they're looking for help to see how we can do this project. So we could create some jobs in the United States by promoting energy efficiency. Because in uh, China, on a per capita, on a per unit of economic output, they use more than twice the energy that we are using. So the potential for them for energy efficiency is substantially more than us. Yes, Mr. Carroll. I, well, just um, to, speaking to the jobs question, I think that the, there are an enormous number of jobs to be had by accelerating energy efficiency in the United States. Most of them will be jobs deploying energy efficiency in the United States uh, as opposed to uh, producing products that we will ship to the rest of the world. The, I, I just didn't want to overlook the fact that there is, this is a very big potential area of job growth economy-wide to, to implement all the measures that my colleagues here have been talking about. Well, what I would hope is that we have technology we can s ship overseas that would help them make their buildings more efficient or, uh, or uh, uh, but especially what I want to avoid is having them do the reverse to us. Right. Uh, of course. So uh, I mean, are there, are, we must have manufacturers that are, are, are technology that's on this edge. We, we, we do have technology, but um, uh, implementing energy efficiency in the United States, for what we are talking about the numbers earlier, we will create between three to five million jobs per year anyway here, because most of those jobs, over 50 percent, it's labor. Uh, you need electricians, you need uh, mechanical contractors, and so on, besides the engineers and the construction managers and the financiers. So the, the jobs will be created here. Let, let me give you, um, sure. again, I'm going to, we can boast together about California that some of the most exciting innovations in technology on energy efficiency, frankly, are happening in California. I had the opportunity to do a tour of Silicon Valley about six weeks ago, and there's a company that is starting up making, for example, zero net energy cement. They took the brightest of the brains um, and said, here's what we're going to do. Here are the parameters. We want to have a product that has as close to zero net carbon emissions as possible. We want to have a product that performs as well or better in terms of quality. We want to have a product that right out of the box, it's as cheap as what is the existing product on the market, and we want to have it scalable because we know we need to be using it throughout the world. They have been able to literally now develop a process that's close to zero net energy production for cement. Another company is working on drywall that you put in the building. So we're, we're really seeing, and, and these are also setting up some factories in, in California to produce the product. So I think it's another example of we can be creating the jobs and we can be creating the industry. And we in the United States have the opportunity to be the world leaders in doing this. Right. Can I add to that briefly? Sure, Mr. We, we have a green collar workforce uh, training program in New York um, that's fairly well funded in partnership with the colleges and universities in New York to train the next generation of worker in green energy technology and efficiency, is that, including uh, renewable energy. focused on community colleges? Yes, it is. Okay. Yes. Um, and it's, it's, it's growing in its recognition and its uh, certification of, of employees. 
and we couple that with a research and development program that New York runs, which is developing and working with industry in New York to, to create that technology that they are then trained on. And as the technology is developed and we have workforce training and certification, we then deploy those technologies through our energy efficiency programs with exactly the point in mind that you made, that we need to be the state or we need to be the country that exports the technology. We don't want to be importing it. Mr. Chairman, I have one more question, but I'll defer to you at this point. Oh, and, and I am going to, in turn, defer back to you so you can ask your question. Okay. Um, this one is for Mr. Klein. Uh, I've noticed with PG&E that uh, the company is fairly receptive to ener energy efficiency measures which will reduce the need to put in new power plants. And I think that's basically the business model. If you can avoid putting in new power plants, you're going to make money, uh, you're going to make more money uh, in a sense. So um, how, how effective a message is that to other utilities to get to get them on board with that. I mean, it seems like ultimately if you give up all, uh, all, all of the, uh, the power, um, the energy supply needs, that you're going to be a distribution company and a transmission company rather than a, than a, uh, um, a generation company. Is that? Um I think that, that you described the model correctly um, with, with the addition that if, if we can avoid transmission, there's a there's a financial benefit to customers uh, there also. Um, I think that, that there's a, uh, a set of companies in the Edison Institute, um, which is the, the trade organization for, uh, for the electric utility ind industry, has, has created uh, a new institute for energy efficiency. So I think there is increasing interest and, and wanting to know more I think that one of the issues you identified is that um, if companies extrapolate and it means that they never build generation, then they don't want to shrink necessarily. So there needs to be right. a mechanism to assure that, that that doesn't happen. And, and, and part of it may be simply that there's enough um, customer growth and, uh, and distribution smart grid kinds of additions to, to rate base that, uh, that make that not a problem. Is there a, a concern about competitiveness if, if you continue this business model uh, with neighboring utilities that might offer communities a, an alternative to your business? I, I think it has been an issue in some cases where, where we uh, compete for customers with irrigation districts, for example, who right. aren't under the same uh, requirements and don't provide the same services. Um, but but on, on the whole, I would say it's not a big problem. Thank you.